first thing we're going to work on will be the meat that we're going to need for our stew and our soup. So I already have uh, about three pounds of goat meat with the skin on, and I already have them rinsed. I'm just going to place that in my pot. And I like to use goat meat when I make my stew uh, or soup, but you can be able to really substitute any other meat you like. You know, beef is good, chicken is good, whatever kind of meat you like, you can certainly be able to use that. I just like to use goat meat a lot. You know, it doesn't have as much fat, and you know, it has that distinct taste to it. I really like it. And one thing I like about goat meat is the one with the skin burn, with the skin on, and they really burn off the, the hairs off the skin. It gives it that nice smoky type of taste to it. So I really like to use the goat meat with the skin on. Now, whenever you're working with goat meat, especially the one with the skin on, it might take you a little longer to cook it down. So something that without the skin will take you probably about 30 minutes to cook. You have to add about maybe 15 more minutes if you're working with the skin. So I have my goat meat, about three pounds of that with the skin. It's time for me to season it. Now, to season it, anytime you're cooking meat, the first thing you need is onion powder. It's very, very necessary when cooking. You can either use fresh onions or onion powder. I like to use onion powder because I want my stock, which is the water that the meat will be cooked in, I want the stock kind of clear. I don't want any um, um, fresh onions in there, so I like to use onion powder. So I have some onion powder here for that. And you could be generous with your use of onion powder. About two tablespoons so is fine. I'm just going to mix this in, making sure you get all the corners and crevices of your meat to take on that onion. Another thing we need in here is some thyme. I have, a tea, I have a tablespoonful of thyme in here. Just spread that in there. And I have some bouillon base. And I have, you're going to place about two tablespoons full of that here. You, you really want a very, very, you know, delicious stock when you're done. Something very flavorful and very delicious. So you're going to add a lot of good stuff to it in the beginning. So remember, guys, about two tablespoons full of onion powder, two tablespoons full of bouillon base. I'm using the gnaw crayfish uh, bouillon base. And then I have some, uh, about a tablespoonful or so of thyme. I make sure I rub down every piece of meat I have in here, about three pounds of my goat meat in there. And then I'm going to add some water. Now, the amount of water you're going to add is you want enough water to somehow, you know, come to the top of it. But not, it has to be even, okay, along with your meat. You don't want to cover it too much. And last but not least, just a little bit salt. You don't want to overdo it. A good two teaspoons full of salt should do. We'll mix our meat very nicely. And we're going to place that over medium heat for about 35 minutes or so. By the time it's done, the meat should be nice and tender. You should be able to stick, be able to stick a fork through the skin of the goat meat. So I'm going to place this here. Medium heat for 35 minutes. Now while our meat is cooking, I'll start working on the base of our tomato stew. Now, West African cuisine usually starts with three things, especially when you're making soups or stews. Tomatoes, peppers, and onions. Now, there are a lot of different types of variations of how much tomato to pepper to onion ratio you use in your stew. And I have my own personal uh, combination that I use. I use seven Roma tomatoes. Now, the tomatoes you need to use needs to be the soft tomato, nothing too hard, because if it's too hard, it's going to sour really quick when you make your stew. So try to go for very ripe tomatoes if you can. Nice and soft tomatoes to one habanero pepper. And you said the thing with habanero is you really don't know what kind of heat it carries. Sometimes you use, sometimes you use one, it doesn't have as much heat, and sometimes you use one and it's too hot. But with, this, with the amount of tomatoes in here, it can be able to handle one habanero pepper. We're going to use one onion, a medium-sized onion. And last but not least, we need two red bell peppers. Now, red bell peppers that I use 
are roasted red bell peppers. I, it really, really has a lot of flavor in it, and I like to go with roasted red bell peppers. So two roasted red bell peppers. One. And we have two. And that is the secret to my tomato stew. I'm gonna cut this up. Last but not least, we're gonna pull our habanero. You can be able to use everything along with the seeds. If you like heat, if you don't like too much heat, take the seeds out and take the ribs out so as not to make it too, too hot. And we're gonna blend this. We're gonna go take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue to work on our African or our West African pepper stew. Don't go away. Welcome back guys. Now I've blended up my tomatoes and onions and peppers and I have over medium heat, I've heated up some oil, about a cup of peanut oil. I'm gonna just add that in there. Mmm, looks really, really good. We're gonna cook this in here for about 20 minutes or so, and then we're gonna start spicing it up. So while we're letting that cook, we're gonna first of all cover this up. Make sure it's on medium. In the meantime, we're gonna check in in our stew. It looks absolutely fabulous. We're gonna mix that. It has really, really cooked very nicely. It's time for us to spice that up. Now, before I start my spicing, I'm gonna add some stock. I have some homemade chicken stock here that I have frozen. So I'm gonna be adding, oh, about a cup of that in here. Mix that in. Now it's time to spice it up. Spicing it up is a very, very personal taste. I love a lot of bouillon type flavor in my food. So I'll say about two tablespoons full is fine. To that, I'll add some curry and some thyme. Also very important in my stew. Something like this. A nice heaping tablespoonful of curry. Same amount with uh, thyme. Mix that in. We're going to let that simmer just right. This is good. Okay. While I'm letting that simmer, I'll go ahead and start frying meat. It's in here. We're going to fry it until it's golden brown. Oh, it should fry about two to three minutes and then it'll be ready to take out. Next thing we're going to work on is our stew. Oh, looks out of this world. Just delicious. I already have my meat fried up. and I'm just going to place my meat pieces in there. And what this will do is soak up all that beautiful goodness in that stew. There we go. There you have it. Our stew is ready. And there we go. It's nice and cool. That is pounded yam foo foo. It's time for me to plate my wonderful soup, my goosey soup. It has all that beautiful spinach in it. Just gorgeous. It's enough for one serving. To that, I will add my pepper stew. And a couple of pieces of meat. Of that beautiful goat meat. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A traditional 
a classic West African dinner. Pounded yam with a goosey soup and pepper stew. Now remember, whenever you try to do something in your kitchen, and you're trying to do something new, try something African. It is the best way to go. From my kitchen to yours, enjoy. Samosa, 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 Samosa,